Namaste everyone, my name is Prasida Sudhakar and I am a rising senior at Rutgers University studying Computer Science, Economics and Critical Intelligence Studies. I'm very excited to bring you two wonderful Hindu women in STEM for our panel on Hindu women in STEM. Pratima Roy is a data analytics intern at NASA and a recent graduate of the New York City College of Technology. Vishnupriya Parasaram is a software engineer at Boeing and a graduate of computer science from the University of Oklahoma. Welcome both. Okay, so first question is, how does being a Hindu impact you as an engineer? First, I'm going to go to you, Vishnupriya, and then Pratima. Namaste, everyone. Thank you, Prasitha. So one thing that I am often reminded of when I'm an engineer at work is staying even-minded. That I think is one of the core practices that a practicing Hindu um, often integrates into their life is staying even-minded despite the many ups and downs, small and big. Um, so whenever there is something that I don't like that happens, I do get upset, but how do I go through that without affecting my work too much? How do I go through that without getting angry or sad? And the, the, the opposite uh, is true as well. You know, people, you get praise, you get appreciation when you do good work, but how do you take that as it is and move on to the next thing and not get, and not boast yourself and not, have too much pride, but staying even-minded, I think, is something um, that that is very impactful to me as, as a Hindu engineer. Thanks, Vishnu Priya. And what about you, Pratima? Namaste, everyone. How does being a Hindu impact me as an engineer? Well, being a Hindu doesn't really impact me as an engineer because I know that I can reference my faith into science, daily life, and many hobbies. I pray to Ma Saraswati to bless me with intelligence. I also pray to Lord Vishwakarma Baba to become a sex successful engineer. As a Hindu woman or you know Hindu, I always pray, perform arti, listen to devotional songs as I'm working or learning how to code. Life is not easy and being an engineer as a Hindu woman is really rewarding because for instance, when I'm stuck on a project or a code that I don't understand, I always pray to my gods to seek right knowledge. And I always ask for help from my mentor or colleagues. And being a Hindu, you always have to pray for what you want and God will help you get many things accomplished. Also, if you work hard and follow everything you're doing, then you will get rewarded. If you don't, then that's up to you. I also want to point out that let's say you did an interview at a tech company or any any company or anywhere. Um, it's not God's fault or it's not yours. You just have to try your best in studying hard, ask questions because God will help you no matter what. If you want something in life, pray and work hard. Those two things must go together. Thanks, Pratima. And the next question is, how can young Hindus be proud of their faith and continue Hindu practices as students and professionals? And Vishnupriya, I'll go to you first. Yeah. Um, so one way that one one way that I am proud of my faith, not just as a professional, but also just in general, is but making sure that I have a bindi on even when I'm at work. And I don't think that's something that needs to be hidden or something that should only be reserved for going to the mandir or when you're at home or when you're visiting other Hindus. I think for me, it's, it's a reminder of my values, of, of my values of working hard, staying focused, and I, it's nice to have that reminder every day. Um, and often I see members of other faith at work being uh, 
uh, being proud of their background, being proud of their religion. Even at school, um, I've seen whether it's Muslims, Christians, people across the board, they are proud of who they are and they're not afraid of showing their symbols of faith. And I don't think Hindus need to hide that either. And so one way that um, we can be proud of our religion, being proud of our Hinduness is, is to wear a bindi. And I think there are also other ways such as making sure that we are compassionate to others. Um, you know, the corporate world is often extremely materialistic and, you know, uh, it's off. sometimes you see people who are self-serving and I think some of the Hindu ideals can, can add to that environment and can add that kindness and compassion in, into the world. And I think that's something that's really needed and necessary today. I definitely agree with you. I have similar um, responses to that. Uh, as an American born Bengali who practices Hindu, I always strive to preserve my background and culture. Young Hindus should be proud of their faith. No one should be ashamed or discouraged about who they are. You should love yourself. If you love wearing bindi, wear it. For instance, I'm still practicing new mantras, watching devotional films or like episodes, reading Gita, asking my mom about various mythologies for clarity and listening to beautiful devotional songs in Bengali, Hindu, Telugu, Tamil, and et cetera. Like be curious about your faith and culture, respect and learn about different ethnicities in Hinduism because I love learning about it. It's a rewarding experience. Uh, follow many Hindu channels, sources, like in Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and websites to be knowledgeable. I, you know, I learn about past and current events on the social media platform about Hinduism, and it's, it's amazing. Uh, accept who you are and don't assimilate to something else that you weren't. You know, learn about everyone and everything, but don't forget about your background, your roots. Always prioritize your faith, culture, and where you come from, but don't disrespect others. Thanks, Pratima. And are there any recommendations for social media, especially for young Hindus, so that they can learn more about their faith? Yes, so currently I'm uh, following, like in Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember some of them because I usually go to social media, uh, sorry, Instagram. I go to um, Sharma Instance, Hindu Samatha. Um, I also follow um, Kolkata or um, Hinduism uh, uh, channels and pages. There's like a lot, like if you follow one Instagram channel, there will be many suggested options. And I recommend you all to just follow and just learn. And that's, you know, that's what I did. And I'm learning a lot as a Hindu woman every day about different, you know, gods and goddesses. And I really, you know, being Hindu is, you know, respecting, uh, respecting all your gods and goddesses. I know like in Hinduism, there are some, you know, Hindus who, you know, practice one God, you know, I, I think, you know, every Hindu should practice all gods. Like, you know, if you want to pray Ma Lakshmi, you also have to pray, uh, you know, Vishnu because it's, it's her um, husband. If you pray Ma Kali, you have to pray to Ma Duga because Ma Kali came from Ma Duga's third eye, you know, you know what I mean? So we just have to appreciate everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the beauties of Hinduism is that there are so many different gods that signify so many different things. When we say Ishta Devam, it means something so, you know, significant and unique to each person. It's in that diversity that we're all stronger together. So thanks, Pratima. Um, so the next question is, how can young Hindus counter Hindu phobia at school, workplace and social media, which is a very big question. Okay, Pratima, you can go ahead and answer that first part. No problem. Uh, so how can young Hindus counter Hindu phobia at school, workplace and social media? So um, I want to share my experience when I, was in, when I was younger. When I was in elementary school, 
I remember my teacher told me I can write anything I love or who inspired me. And I remember I drew a picture of Madhuga with her 10 hands and you know her beautiful sari and everything. And according to the legend, Madhuga was created for the slaying of the buffalo demon Mahishura by Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, and the lesser gods who were otherwise powerless to overcome uh, Mahishura. I really love all the gods. And one thing I love is, you know, Devi Shakti. I love Madhuga for giving me so much feminine power. And as you hear and learn about these mythologies, you, you can reference that women are powerful no matter what background they come from. And we should be happy about being a woman in tech or non-tech. Uh, going back to when I was a little kid, I remember my teacher appreciating and loving my goddess and culture. However, there was one teacher at some point uh, telling me why I shouldn't believe in the 10 hand goddess because of how weird and funny she looked. She was telling me to convert and I really despised that. And I, that's what I faced and I don't want that to happen to anyone. So as young Hindus, we can be brainwashed by other people telling us to change based on what they don't like, but you know, be proud of who you are and keep following your dreams. That's beautiful. And, and yeah, absolutely. The, the thing is with Hinduism, we're taught mutual respect and pluralism and we follow our path and others follow their own. And that's kind of like the philosophy that we've always lived by. So yeah, thank you for sharing. That's very beautiful to hear. And uh, Vishnu Priya, I think you got cut out for a bit, but the question was, how can young Hindus counter Hindu phobia at school, workplace and social media? Yeah, so before I answer that, you know, being in Oklahoma, um, it's really easy to feel isolated as a Hindu. And there's not very many people that that you can relate to as a Hindu often. It's, oh, I'm an Indian or I'm South Asian. It's never, I'm, I'm a Hindu. Um, so, so whenever I see Hindu phobia either directed towards me or um, on social media in general, it starts to feel like, it starts to feel lonely. And one way that I have kind of countered that or or in my own way was to form a community or or join the HSC community having those people who are like-minded who are similar to you really helps you uh, stay close to your roots and having that having that community that's relatable and hearing similar experiences is really helpful. So I would definitely encourage you to either form, form your own um, Hindu community wherever you are or, or um, join one that's, that's already existing, whether it's in your university or in your city where you are. Um, and of course, along with that, wearing your Hindu symbols proudly does not always have to be externally, but even internally, like uh, Pratima was talking about earlier, you know, you will have people who will come up to you and and try to assimilate you into into their culture or religion, and we want to make sure that we are we are staying true to who we are and not getting sucked in and having a community around you that's like minded helps you help helps you do that much more easily than, than if you were alone. So even if it's a virtual community, I would definitely recommend having, having those group of Hindu students or, or a Hindu community um, that you surround yourself with. It's the best way to counter Hindu phobia. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, how lonely everything felt when we couldn't see our friends, oftentimes family even, and it felt so lonely just being at home. But actually, at the same time, being a part of HSC has significantly helped counter that and also counter Hindu phobia at the same time, because you have such a supportive community by your side. So definitely, even though there are a lot of downsides to the pandemic, of course, but 
it did make us all feel more connected, even if it's not physically connected. Um, so thank you, Vishnu Priya. The next question is for Pratima specifically. What is it like to be a Hindu woman at NASA? Can you tell us a little bit about like your background of what made you want to work for NASA in the first place? And just a little, maybe even more of your technical background and how you kind of got here and how it's like being a Hindu woman in NASA. Thank you. Um, just tying back to what Vishnu Priya said, I just want to um, share uh, more about the bindi. Yes, I definitely believe that bindi, wearing bindi is really powerful because, you know, it means third eye and also it means beauty. And um, yeah, tying back to the question of how is it like to be a Hindu woman in tech? So for me, like Hinduism has a strong connection with, you know, science, religion, and, you know, when I think about, so I was doing a uh, presentation on Surya of the sun panel for my, um, for my, what's it called, anthropology class. Yes, for my last summer course. And I remember I um, talked about how Surya has two wives, uh, Sanjana and Ch Ch Chaya. And it was so cool because, you know, I learned, I mean, you know, I'm always learning. So I learned that, you know, Sanjana is the reflection, Chaya is the shadow. And that's amazing because when you look at the sun, you know, there's reflection and shadow. And also when I looked at the horses, the seven horses, it made me, you know, reference, wow, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, I mean, that's just me, but uh, let's, um, yeah, so being a Hindu woman in NASA is very re rewarding because you receive the opportunity to work with many scientists, engineers, and researchers, and also uh, mentors. And you get to work on cool projects related to NASA's mission directorates. You get access to attending NASA's exclusive webinars, tours, presentation events, hackathons, and other cool related uh, peer group activities. The challenging part is managing your time efficiently and making sure that you have completed all of the mandated Saturn training courses, but it's all worth it. Uh, NASA is the best place to work for. Everyone appreciates you and you get to learn a lot. And Pratima, kind of following up on that, what was your journey to NASA like, um, especially for other Hindu women? Because I know NASA also has a streak of, you know, very strong, powerful Hindu women representation. But what was your journey like for people, you know, prospective women who are looking to apply? Um, like, what was the application process like? And is it something that you've always wanted to work at? So that's a great question. And thank you for asking. So when I was a, like, about junior senior in college and you know when the pandemic started i you know i really wanted to learn uh, or do an internship remotely and i remember you know i so i'm i'm also part of the rewriting the code uh program i know that you're also part of that organization and i remember i you know i believe god gave me the eyes to look at that opportunity because I always scroll, scroll through and I never see some, you know, good opportunities or sometimes like, you know, good opportunities. And then I saw um, a page about NASA um, applying to the NASA internship. So I told my sister to apply and, you know, I wasn't really ready. So I didn't apply at that time. And, um, but I signed up. So what you do is you go to the NASA portal. Um, it's called intern.nasa.com and you could just google it and when you go they have the sign in and you have to create like an account with your personal or school email and then basically you you know uh, apply put, put in your information and then you select like what projects you want to do at what center and luckily for me it was virtual because um i uh you know i reside in new york and my mom she didn't want me to go far away and i love my mom um so that's that's how i applied and I'm not going to lie, I, you know, I faced, um, I remember I did one interview at NASA Goddard, and I remember I did the interview, it was really great, but it wasn't funded. And then I did a second interview at NASA Kennedy Space Center. Um, the interview was okay, and I think I did a great job, but um, I think I wasn't the best candidate, and, and it's okay, it didn't work out for me. God, you know, always, um, you know, wants everyone to have the best of 
you know, what got planned out. Because you know how Ganesh, he has the book and writes everyone's life, you know. And so then my sister, you know, she helped me out. Um, you know, she was working currently at the NASA Glen. And then um, I told her, can you help me out or something? Or, you know, just, and, and I'm, I was also praying at that time too. So then luckily, I remember I ordered um, Loki Narayan, Vishnu, Vishnu and Mahalakshmi, like a poster. I, I love to order like all these goddesses that I have and that I was featured. I actually bought them from Amazon and they came from India and some of them Germany, I think. And so what happened was on that day, my, 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 my picture of the, I mean, I mean, the God's picture came and all the beautiful, you know, Murtis came. And that day, my sister, she announced that I got into NASA Glen and I got the offer letter and that was a miracle for me. And yeah, I just, I just have to say, it's also, you know, your hard work. I mean, obviously my major, you know, was computer engineering technology. So that matched with, you know, what I was in and also God's help. So it all came together and yeah, that day, um, and then I also didn't expect myself to intern for the summer as well. That was all, you know, God's grace. I, and as a Hindu, one more thing I wanted to share as a Hindu, whenever, you know, not just any accomplishments, like every time, you know, it's when it's Monday, when it's any day, Monday, Thursday, specifically, I always, uh, you know, give God prasads, uh, prasad and sweets. And, you know, whenever I have like a big, uh, or, you know, big accomplishment, I always with you know, let's say my paycheck, I always give my, my sweets and my God, uh, my sweets to God because of appreciation. And that's what I think. I think because I'm respecting God and giving sweets and respecting, um, you know, God, I think they, they value that. And that's why I'm getting more luckier and working hard um, in my, you know, future and everything. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I really applaud all your resilience because I also know how it feels to be rejected from internships. And then, you know, I'm so glad that something worked out for you in the end, especially at NASA and something that you've clearly been very passionate about from a young age. So that's amazing. I'm incredibly happy for you. Um, so then the next question is, what are some challenges that you have faced being a Hindu woman in tech and how do you overcome them? Vishnu Priya, you can go ahead. Yeah, so a challenge that I have noticed um, myself facing is it's so easy to feel alone. Um, and the pandemic makes it worse because even at the beginning, when I started working, I started right when the pandemic was starting to hit pretty bad. And um, so I was working from home um, sometimes when I got to go into the office from time to time, it still started to get pretty isolated and I was working from home and I did not know if any other new grads that joined. I did not get to meet my team in person and um, being a Hindu specifically and being a Hindu in Oklahoma especially, it's you start to feel like you're the only one who looks like you and who talks like you. And one way I have kind of overcome that is watching videos of people who are Hindu women and engineers. My favorite is Dr. Swati Mohan. Um, it's so cool to follow her career at NASA and um, how hard she works. And sometimes when, when I kind of feel down, I, I, I go to YouTube and I watch her video um, where she is guiding the Perseverance rover as it's landing. Um, I've seen that video probably like tens of times by now. Um, makes me so happy. Um, and kind of a reminder that even though it feels lonely, even with the pandemic thrown in, like I'm not the only one who is who is a Hindu and who is an engineer, and I know meeting people like Pratima um, and connecting, even though it's virtually, makes you makes you feel much more closer to to the community you are a part of, 
And I think that was my uh, my silver lining in, in the pandemic is I got to be part of such a fantastic community. And, you know, one more thing was going back to what Pratima was talking about, the pageants and the music. Um, I think I, I do that too. Like my favorite um, thing to do when I'm at work, um, it really helps me focus as well as um, listening to Carnatic music. I usually listen to violin Carnatic music um, a lot. A day does not go by at work without, without going, going through, through a playlist or two. Um, I think that also makes me feel a lot connected. And all of the music is um, like centered around the stories of our Pakvans and stories from epics like Mahabharata, Ramayana, and so that that also helps me overcome that feeling of loneliness and isolation sometimes. Um, so yeah. Thanks, Vishnu Priya and Pratima. Yes, tying back to uh, what Vishnu Priya said. Uh, I also love to listen to bhajans and, you know, I have like an MP3 in my living room and I love hearing um, Anup Jalata's bhajans and I like, I love dancing too. Like when I feel sad or something, you know, I, I dance, I, I sing and also, yeah, time back, um, I have so many inspirations. Uh, my mom is a big inspiration. She, you know, she taught me Hinduism. Um, she was the one. And also Sunita Williams and Swati Mohan and many famous, you know, Indian American women around the world. They're really inspiring. I really love Sunita Williams when I actually, it's so funny. I used to watch her uh, YouTube video on how she was in the ISS, um, the International Space Station. And she was um, giving like a tour of how she was brushing her brushing her teeth uh, with the toothpaste and showing everything in the space and talking about it. And I thought she was, you know, white or something, right? But when I when I found out that she, her name was Sunita Williams and when she took the Bhagavad Gita to the space station because she, she felt, you know, she felt positive and she said that brought her so much um, positive energy or something like that, that, that made me so proud because you know there are there are many people like you know me and Vishnu Priya who who face like the same thing similar things and um what what are some challenges I face being a Hindu woman in tech and how I have overcome them so some challenges I faced being a Hindu woman in tech is when there were many people who made stereotypes or assumptions based on my culture and underestimate underestimated my knowledge of the STEM field. There was also a time when others uh, thought that I wasn't good enough in the STEM field since um, I wore a bindi every day. Others would assume that I'm married. They would think that I'm not con confident enough to accomplish my dreams of becoming an engineer. However, that is all false because with God's grace and my family support and everyone, I'm the first generation graduate with cum laude at the New York City College of Technology and interning at NASA and hopefully get a full-time job and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's amazing. First of all, congratulations. That's awesome. Um, but I was going to ask, obviously, I don't want to repeat what's, you know, we've been seeing kind of like on social media, but how has that made you feel? And do you feel supported by the community? And if so, like, how can we better support you as fellow Hindu women? I believe I'm getting so much support from everyone in this world that are American, that are Indians, that are non, non-Hindus. So I have to say, you know, first, thank you to, you know, all the gods and goddesses that I believe in, you know, special thanks to Madhurga, Ganesh, and everyone, you know, every god. And also, I really want to say, if Kankana Ronald watches this or anyone, I want to say thank you to her, to um, Kathy Luders, to everyone. And many Indian citizens, many American citizens. I'm sorry, I don't remember everyone's name, but I just want to say thank you so much for the positivity and supporting me. Um, you know, I actually, you know, recently I found out that some someone was actually 
posting a tweet under my name that I didn't write and, you know, making fake accounts now that I'm kind of like getting featured and everything uh, since that feature. Uh, so that's why I just want to say it's all, you know, because of God. And also NASA um, is really protective. They're always, you know, reaching out and, you know, uh, making sure that I'm safe and they're, you know, they're amazing. So I just want to say thank you so much. I, yeah, I have no complaints. <laughs> I'm so glad you feel supported. And that's exactly why we're all here. We have to support each other, especially during you know, turbulent times. So I'm glad you feel supported. And so for young girls who are looking to pursue careers in STEM, what is some advice that you would give to them? And Vishnu Priya, you can go ahead. So going to school sometimes is not fun. Um, as an engineering student, it's it's frustrating and it's hard, but I would definitely say that one thing that kept me going was um, being part of the engineering community. And I was most excited to, to kind of apply, apply the knowledge and the skills I've gained um, to, to contribute to something. And I think that's what kept me going. So having, having that at the back of your mind um, is really helpful. And technically speaking, I would say surround yourself with people who challenge themselves and people who are really good at what they do. And I think that's, that's the biggest blessing I have at work is there are people who have been in this industry for, for decades and being surrounded by people like that can you know, going up to them and asking a question that, that you think might just take, a, even if it's a yes or no answer, or if it's like a five minute discussion, can very easily turn into like a half an hour, 45 minute conversation. And, and if you were not brave enough to go up and ask that question, you would have never um, learned all of this new things. So I would definitely say surround yourself with talented people and experienced people and ask questions um, because I was one of those people in college who who would sometimes be scared or to ask questions and say that okay I don't know how to do this or I did not understand that but I think having that safe space um, creating that safe space for yourself is so important so definitely say those two things and um, and don't be afraid um, because even though sometimes it can be intimidating but I think as Hindus we have something really special and that is we have a lineage of um, STEM excellence and this is not just modern day but if you look at our history we have people like Aryapatta and Bodhayan and we're all the torchbearers of, of that community. And we have to um, take pride in that and learn about this, learn, learn about our history of excellence in math, uh, engineering and science, and make sure that we pass that on to, to the next generation. Beautiful, yeah, and wonderfully said. Thank you, Vishnu Priya and Pratima. I, I advise young girls who are aspiring, aspiring to pursue a STEM career to follow their dreams and to avoid peer pressure. It doesn't matter what people say. And if you're interested in STEM, just go for it. Don't ever be nervous or petrified to ask questions. And uh, also be brave and work hard and always pray to God. And God is always there for everyone. And that's, that's all I have. Thank you everyone and namaste. Thank you so much both for joining us for this chat. I sincerely appreciate your time and you know it was so wonderful hearing all of your insights and I'm sure that many young Hindu women are inspired by both of you and your accomplishments. And with that we are going to wrap up this discussion. Please like and subscribe to Hindu Students Council. Namaste everyone and we will see you soon. Namaste. Namaste.